Hey everybody. <clears throat> so I did another run today with a uh, running tin album. Uh, it's my second full one. Um, first one I did Abbey Road, which was really fun. Um, just to listen closely to a lot of different songs on there. <clears throat> um, today I listened to, I didn't take too much time to think about it, but uh, Phoebe Bridger's uh, Punisher which is a very low-key album, which fits along with what I like to do. Um, I like to have a nice slow pace, um, six and a half minutes a kilometer, something like that, for a decent amount of time. So this album's about 40 minutes, <clears throat> worked out well for me. Um, what I like about doing this is, uh, well, especially with this album, is there's a few songs I'm very familiar with, um, that I've listened to on playlists, but haven't been able to listen to it all the way through until now. Um, and, uh, yeah, a lot of it's very slow. <clears throat> Some maybe, I guess, a little too slow, but it's a quiet day. All I can hear is birds chirping or some, uh, snowmobile enthusiasts in the distance. So, some nice mellow music down the road. I have to feel like it, uh, it's encouraging for more than me. Maybe there's some animals in the forest that are enjoying the nice music as well. <clears throat> so yeah, I know uh, um, uh, Kyoto is a good song I've known. It's a really great running song. I've had it on a running playlist before. And uh, I know the end. It's a really nice song um, that uh, it finishes the album off. But in between, there's a lot of good stuff. Um, I See You. Is a, is a great song, um, and uh, Graceland 2, um, actually really good running songs. Again, just nice and easy, you know, therapeutic. <clears throat> um, yeah, speaking of ICU, um, I like to dabble in the hot topic now and then, um, and, uh, you know, this... This week, uh, keeping track on the numbers, uh, uh, hospital numbers in Alberta are at an all-time high. Um, it makes me think of all the people that uh, are in there, um, older folks with conditions that are not able to kind of hold off um, the, uh, a lot of COVID, probably just a lot of other things too, but for the COVID numbers, very high. Um, and mostly, you know, non-vaccinated people. Um, the overall goal <clears throat> I've seen with the vaccines is to limit the hospital um, uh, numbers so that the hospitals can be used, but we all know that that's not going very well. Um, uh, there's a lot of ambulances that are not available. And in our area, um, there's certain days the last several months where there's been a news item that says hey just so you know for the next 24 hours there's not going to be a doctor in your hospital uh it's concerning um <clears throat> to give you a little insight on my experience um so yeah we were in a car accident the day of I guess you, like the weekend of the thursday of the weekend where uh they started implementing uh, restrictions so um, you know, thankfully how that night went for us, um, it could have been a lot worse for us. Um, but when we got to the hospital, we went to the University of Alberta hospital and there was kids involved. So, uh, the stallery was where we went, but first in the emergency room, uh, we had the emergency response team, we actually had two, uh, one was there and one was coming, but because they heard there was a a head-on collision on the highway, which there was. Um, well, like, kind of like a T-bone. Um, but it was uh, it was on the highway, so they heard the worst. And, um, you know, uh, the other driver did pass away. Um, and they thought we would have been in rough shape. Um, so when we got there, they took Miles in to uh, check him because he had a broken collarbone and 
I stood with Jonas and talked with uh, one of the emergency response crew. There's about eight people there. Um, eight specialists um, to just in case they needed to be. And he talked to me and got clarification on how we were. Uh, kind of wanted assurance that we were okay. And uh, then they left <clears throat> to do whatever else. And we were taken care of by the team in the stallery. And we had plenty of room, plenty of doctors to talk to. And the boys stayed in a room overnight. They wheeled in an extra bed for me. They got me a cell phone charger. Um, they were so kind. It was uh, a really, considering the circumstances, a really positive experience. So when I think of people that uh, might be in a similar situation now um, with all the icy roads, and I think of maybe the lack of care, the lack of uh, resources they might be uh, without um, in a situation like that, it breaks my heart. And uh, it honestly takes just a little bit of thinking beyond myself to think of what these hospital numbers impact. Um, and the little I can do to, you know, my whole family got COVID this last two weeks, except for me. I mean, maybe I had it, but I never tested positive. I didn't have any symptoms. My wife had a few symptoms. My kids had no symptoms. My kids were vaccinated. My wife's vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. The only one that had symptoms bad was my two-year-old. And that was, you know, the way that it mostly affects younger kids. He was okay. Um, but I'm thankful we didn't have to go to the hospital. And I'm sure a lot of hospital workers are thankful, thankful we didn't have to either. Um, but yeah, this, this is why we do it. Um, this is why it's important. Uh, I went to the boys hockey game today. Well, we got an email. An email uh, about the arena. People aren't following mandates. People aren't wearing masks. People are bringing food, food in and sitting too close together. Uh, 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 seemed as so an official email from the town saying this needs to stop. Police have had to come. Okay, so we go there today. And I mean, it's truck whatever weekend. Truckers, convoy. So course um, there's a bunch of people uh, there at the arena ready to drive to Edmonton okay we're going to the arena and 90 percent 90 percent of the adults 90 percent of the parents who got the email who care that their kids play hockey we're not wearing masks we're not distancing we're drinking coffees and I just don't get I don't get it I don't get risking your children's fun hockey to whatever. There's not even uh, there's not even a vaccine mandate there. It's just a mask, and don't bring coffee in for your kids' game. So I, I don't get it. Um, it's hard not to get frustrated. Um, why do people wear masks to protect others, not to protect themselves? Um, it's very simple. I mean, Google. I understand people don't like certain media outlets, but you just need to Google things to learn smart, interesting things that are relevant because you're an adult and you're living in a society with adults. And we need to act like it. Um, that was frustrating. The last thing I say about hospitals is my, my wonderful dad is waiting for surgery, uh, a back surgery. And he's going to be waiting for months, again, because the hospitals are overrun um, by COVID. And the large majority, it's not disputed, are non-vaccinated people. So this issue, um, We've all talked about it, but if everyone was vaccinated, there wouldn't be as many people in the hospital. And then someone like my dad could get his pain relieving surgery sooner than, you know, months from now. So he's just in constant pain, taking pain medication. 
uh, his next door neighbor, a younger, younger than my dad, but has a massive ear pain. He used to get like his eardrum reconstructed or something, but he can't get surgery either. So he's got to wait. How many more stories are like that? Do those people matter? Do their freedom? Does that matter? Is it too much to ask to put a mask on when you go buy groceries to the stores that everyone's allowed in? I don't know. That's my first hand. I, I go from beginning of COVID where the hospital is overflowing with resources to now where, you know, you don't even have doctors in hospitals. And I know that's not all COVID, but it's mostly COVID. I mean, come on, stop being selfish. You know, anyways, that's my controversial idea kind of boiled down to 11 short minutes.